Alright, hello guys, unlucky, lucky crap players, whatever you want to call me here. Um, welcome back, or welcome to my YouTube channel. This is the second part to the locking guide. Uh, from the first part I covered spinning rods, catfish setups, and uh, that kind of stuff. So, today I'm going to cover the, in my opinion, the more complicated one. This is going to be locking bottom rods, you know, vangas and TIs, sturgeon, beluga, that kind of stuff. I'm not going to be covering beluga. I mean, I, I have a general idea on how to lock them, but I am not at all comfortable enough to say and, and go out and, and do a tutorial, but um, also, I can't even hook a beluga big enough in the first place, so, you know, that's my, uh, that's, that's my reason, but, uh, yeah, so, Let's, let's get straight into it, you know. Um, first things first, you're really going to want... Uh, you're, you're really just going to want the sheet. that uh, will be linked in the description below. So I'm going to open up that mega sheet right now. Just because it's great for explaining things. But um, first things first. Alright. Uh, I'm going to go base this off of TIs and Vangas. It's, it's the same for all rods, and I will show so you guys an example with a sage rod. And why my sage rod looks a little bit like this. My sage rod looks like 19% blink and 82% line guides, because I bullied it with locking and vengas and sturgeon, but, uh, yeah. So, first things first, I have this set up for carp, uh, gonna go ahead and set it up for sturgeon. So, you, you have three options here, really, for sturgeon, right? You have 74 braid, 84 braid, and 110 braid. Or, yeah, 74, 84, 100 times. Um, with Vanga and TI specifically. Uh, so, your Vanga, right? Vang I know I have a Vanga Black, don't question it. It's the uh, same as the other Vangas, you know. Vangas are 32 kilos of drag. But, um, they have a 99 kilo lock. So, with that in mind, obviously you'd think to use 74 or 84 braid. Except your TI here is 80 kilos, so you'd think you can only use 74 maybe. That's not necessarily the case. You can use 84 and 110 line. Because um, as long as your rod is straight, right, there's something called straight rotting, where, where you basically point your rod straight on at the fish and it takes all the tension off the rod and puts it into the reel, giving your setup from 80 kilos up to whatever your Vanga mech is, which in my case with this one at 8.8%, I'm going to do 99 minus 8.8%, uh, that is 90.2 kilos. So this setup right here is 90.2 kilos when I straight rod lock. That's that's how that is. I mean, so I'm going to set up for Easterge here. I am definitely more comfortable with 74 kilo braid on Easterge because they're a little bit buggy to be honest. I've used 84, but Easterge are buggy. They glitch into things, they can do some crazy things. I don't know if they do it as much anymore, I don't think they do. I haven't experienced any major bugs with them recently, but in the past they definitely have. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up the hook strength table on kilted jock sheet here, and I am going to be using Ultra Series 4 hooks. They clock in at 77.5 kilos of, uh, of load capacity, right there. And I have 74 kilo braid, so if I fail the lock, the braid is weaker than my reel and weaker than my rod. I, therefore, the only thing that will break is the braid. Now with this same setup, if I put 84 on, stronger than my rod, weaker than my reel, but the hook is weaker than the rod, therefore the hook would break. So, 74 and 84 is basically the same, you get the same amount of line. With this hook, it's it's pretty much the same. Straight rotting doesn't really come into play until belugas or bait fishing. Uh, so, you know, it's mostly the same as spinning rods, but also not. Ah, sorry, getting something to drink. But, um, TIs and mangas are pretty much the king of the bottom locking setups. 
Now, theoretically, a sage rod and a manga, or sage rod and a manga, is the same strength as a ti and a manga, if you straight rod it. However, using a sage rod is much, much more dangerous because if you accidentally turn your rod just a little bit too far to the side and get a tension jump, which is what happens when the game switches the load off the reel and onto the rod, you can instantly break your rod and that's just not good. You don't want to do that. So I am actually going to go ahead and pop in here and pop, pop into the store here and, and show you a few, a few of the spinning reels to lock with. Your options for locking here are a lot more limited. I mean, you can lock with really any spinning reel. Uh, obviously, Vangas are going to be your beasts that you're really going to want. Megaras are 72 kilos, so you could use those. Tagaras are 63. I've I've locked personally to Tagaras. I don't like it that much, but I have done it. Uh, yeah, so really with spinning reels, you're really, really limited. But... In this case, I'm going after Easterge today. Uh, Genji has given me a spot, so shout out to him. I mean, it's it's the sim it's a similar spot to what I thought, but it's a few coordinates off of where I was, so hopefully it'll work. I'm running low on chafers. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Crab and Muscle PVA, and this is my Easterge setup right here, 74 braid. Banga. Uh, you know, 110 gram weight, 4 0 hook. This is my basic sturgeon setup, right? Right here. Pretty much cut, dry, clean, simple. Um, There's really not a lot to say here, to be honest, about locking with bottom rods. Because, I mean, the, the reason why I could go so in depth with it on, on the catfish stuff yesterday is because. There's just so many more options for it, right? There's a lot more, uh, a, a lot more rods and and reels that you can use because the spinning reels just aren't really built for locking. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, they're just not really built for locking. Um, so in this case, the only thing I really can do is. Go over there, set my clip to 60, and bomb it out and try to hook a 70 kilo Easterge. But, um, so I'll try to explain this without actually trying to hook a fish because I'm not sure how reliable hooking a big fish is to actually show this off. But this is basically your setup right here for sturgeon and locking on, on bottom rods is a TI or a, a legacy or a legacy TI. Preferably the TI as the line guides are quite a bit stronger than the legacies at least in wear wise they don't wear as fast I mean if you go look at the uh, and I'll, I'll show you why that is really quick those of you who don't know if you look at the and, and read the description of the legacy here uh, I mean up here sorry premium carp rods you know lightweight reliable blanks uh, modules graphite blah, yada 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 and if you look at the TIs and why these things are good, it says, however, they are equipped with not steel, but with titanium line guides. So TIs have titanium line guides. I mean, these, they last a good bit, but of course, if you fish belugas a lot or Easterge, you're going to chew through your line guides pretty quick if you use 84 or 110 kilo braid. So, uh, I mean, it's a little difficult. Again, it's it's a little difficult to go as in depth with um, TIs and and such as it was with um, spinning rods, just because uh, there's really not a lot to say with it, at least with setting up. Now, now where bottom rods and and locking with with setups like this, TI and a manga or whatever gets more complicated than locking with spinning rods is when it comes to the actual max dragging of the fish or setting your reel to lock max drag lock is the same thing and when to fight the fish with friction and when to lock it now with Russian sturgeon I'd say 
9 out of 10 times, you can pretty much just lock and walk. No issue, just lock them and walk straight back, pull them straight in. Which is another issue with uh, spinning reels, is especially the Vanga, is under tension, Vanga's reel extremely slowly. So you have the lock and walk. You, you lock it and you quite literally start walking backward. And so there's there's a couple strategies. You can sit there and, and lock and unlock until you stop the fish and, and turn it and, and walk back. Or as you're walking back, if the tension jumps, it starts going up, but not high enough to cause you to unlock, you can walk forward, counter that, and try to keep the fish turned or turn it back before you unlock. But um, it, it's that's pretty much all I can describe from here, really. Uh, I really got to go try to hook any sturge now, so... I'll, uh, yeah. I've really got to try that. I'll kick up a stream. Maybe. We'll see. No, nope. I'll kick up a stream right after this video. If I hook a big Easterge, I'll click the record and quickly do a, a tutorial on how to turn the fish and upload that. Because, um, there, there's just not a lot to say, really, about TIs and Dengas and locking and that. Um, that's basically just the setup and, and how it's done. The sturgeon, you know, this is, you have your PVA, your bait, your 4-0 hook. I prefer the Ultra Series because they're stronger. Your weight, your line, whatever. Now, I mean, so, uh, yeah, there's honestly not much more to say. Other than TIs are, on the surface, TIs are really the only bottom rods you can lock with. However, you can use sages and fortunas and carp dominators and any, any bottom rod really. As long as the base kg, of, as long as the kg of the rod is over your line, you can pretty much safely use any rod and even, or over your real uh, strength, sorry, your real strength. So with Vangas, um, Again, if we got to look at carp rods here. Uh, you can, like, a, a native here is at 50 kilos, so, you know, you can use these things, these natives. They're, I don't recommend it, but you could. You can use for tunas for locking, they're at 39 kilo. And uh, I'll explain this in the next part of this, the part, the third part, or fourth part, whatever one happens first, because I need to do a part for catfish and the part for sturgeon. Is when you straight rod, again, you take all the load off the rod, and it puts it all into the reel. And I'll explain that uh, in the next part to this little mini-series. So, I basically just wanted to take this time, since I was here and about to go for Easterge, was uh, explain how I set up for them, and the basics of locking with bottom rods. Exact same concept as spinning rods, just you have two, basically two modes. You have straight rod and bent rod, right? You, you bend your rod or you have a straight. Straight rodding only takes effect if the line is heavier than the rod. It only takes effect if the line, if, if the rod is the weakest link is what I should say. So if the rod is under the reel, the rod is under the line and the rod is under the hook. That's why it's really only effective on bait fish rigs, except for on this TI. This TI is at 9.5% damage. So we will take the, the KG of the TI here, if you ever want to calculate this, 80.2. And I'm going to subtract off from the blank 9.5%. Just doing this on a calculator, because it is, this TI is 72 kilos because of the blank damage. Therefore, it is under the braid, and it is under the hook. It is under the braid, it is under the hook. Therefore, TI, this TI is the weakest link in this setup, and straight rotting is possible on this TI. So on this one, if I have it pointed straight, compared to bent, there will be a tension jump because the game is switching the pressure off the rod to the reel and line. And so basically, when you put your rod straight, it eliminates the rod from the equation. Now you're just focusing on the reel, the line, and the hook. 
That's it. Uh, so, whatever one of those three items is the weakest will break. So, yeah. I hope this uh, little introduction into locking with bottom rods explained it enough. I mean, as best as I could, there's really not much to say about it again, other than that's the basic concept of it. You, you gotta take into consideration your blank damage, though. Your line guide damage doesn't have any effect on the rod strength, other than casting accuracy and distance, but really no real effect on the rod. No pun intended. Um, I mean... Again, you, you want to do the calculations, you just take the kg of the rod, so 80.2, and then minus it off. You know, just subtract 4.6%. And there you go. This rod is 76 kilos. It is stronger than the line. Therefore, line is weakest link. Straight rotting is not effective. But, straight rotting can help for turning fish, whether it changes the tension or not. At least I think it does. I'm not 100% sure on that. It just feels like it does at times. I feel like I have more control, but that's just me, personal preference. Anyway, um, yeah, if you guys made it to the end, thank you, and I uh, hope this helped at least explain a little bit the intro into locking with bottom rods and vangas, so basically TIs and vangas or whatever, I mean, same concept, if you want to know if you can lock on a reel, check it, it out on the uh, on Kilted Jock's mega sheet, look at the reel mechanism and then match it up accordingly and go from there. Although I don't really condone locking on anything under than a TI and Vanga and Sturgeon. I don't lock really on anything other than Sturgeon and Catfish. You know. But um yeah. Thank you guys for watching. This was uh my little take on locking with bottom rods. I hope this helped explain it a little bit. It's pretty simple, honestly, at least setting up. Now I'm going to go try to hook an Easter's that is worthy of explaining how to fight them, because fighting with Locke is a lot more intense and a lot more high risk than fighting with your friction break, which is just on 29, and the worst that happens is your reel burns. With locking, you mess it up, the worst that happens, you, you break... You break your line, you break your hook, you break your rod, you break your reel, whatever. You break something. That's pretty much what happens. Or, so, uh, yeah. That's, that's all I got so far. Um, gonna go hook this stupid Easterge now, because I want that trophy, and I want to try to hook a big one, because they're fun to fight. And preferably, if I hook one, I hook a really, really mad 70 or 80 that'll fight me for 20 minutes or so. So I really have a good opportunity to explain how to fight them. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next video, live stream, whenever. Hope you all have a good day, night, evening, whatever. Tight lines, and good luck.